I love Hallelujah. you, man. Amen. Lord bless you. You may be seated for 85 seconds. Hallelujah. Well, I can read my text and you can sit. Amen. That'd be all right. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. What great worship. I thought it was just another ounce or two. We've just blown this thing up. The power of God was here. The last couple of times I've been here to preach on Sunday night, we just shouted it down. Everybody left with victory. Amen. So I'm Man, I was hoping he'd blow up again. But anyway, thank God he's in the house. He inhabits the praises of his people. That means he enthrones himself. He enthrones himself wherever we praise him. He's everywhere in his omniscience and his omnipresence. But when we begin to praise him, he manifests himself. Amen in his glory. And that's the difference between him just being everywhere but when you begin to praise him, he sets a throne up in that praise. And anything that we need, he will do. Amen. We love the Polans. We're so glad they're here with us. Amen, friend, for a long time. Amen. I was talking today and I forgot. Amen. They used to pastor in Alabama. My God, and I'm just going to say this. I don't know if he's still an Alabama fan, but I'm glad he got you out of that mess down there in Alabama. Hallelujah. No, I'm kidding. Amen. But anyway, I'm Boomer Sooner now. We got to play them once a year. Jesus, y'all help. Y'all pray for me this football season, would you? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm kidding. Hey, I done got carnal now. Hallelujah. LSU got LSU coming to all. What in the name of Jesus is going on? Anyway, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I love my bishop and his wife. Amen. Thank God. We love our pastor. If you got your Bibles, let's take them out. Turn to Revelation 7. Revelation 7. And we'll begin reading at verse 9 through verse 14. Now, y'all know the rules. Amen. It's about every 38 seconds. Guarantees a shorter message than if you didn't. Amen. Verses 9 through 14, then we'll flip over to the book of John, chapter 16, and verse 33. John 16, 33. We'll start in Revelation 7 and 9. After this, I beheld in lo a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders of the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation. These are they which came out of great tribulation. John 16 and verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Come on, tell somebody, Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. And I want to talk to you just for a few moments. And after Wednesday night, y'all know I can do it in a few moments. I mean, y'all was like, what? What in the name of God? What? What? Y'all were amen and good and just moving right along, just bumped me right on through the nose. Hey, ain't no sense preaching everything I know. Amen. Just <laughs> let's go eat pizza. Hallelujah. <laughs> So anyway, I want to talk to you about this subject. These are they which came out. Turn to three people and say, you can come out of it. Come on, tell somebody behind you, you can come out of it. The Lord bless you and you may be seated. Of course, this passage in Revelation comes from, uh, of course, the book of Revelation, but it also comes from a place that has been used many times to talk about the end time, the last things that will happen on this world. We know we're living in the last days because 
Number one, Israel is in a major war. Uh, Putin has, uh, not Putin, but uh, oh, the leader for Israel slipped my brain. But anyway, he, he just made a trip up to the northern part of Israel and checking out with the soldiers and checking out the land and trying to decide what they're going to do. China and Russia and North Korea have now bonded together. And China, Russia has, I mean, uh, China has even taken a battleship and moved south a few months ago, heading down towards uh, where we know the Word of God tells us there's going to be an all-out war against Israel and the people of God. Now, when you look at Israel on the map, it's about the size of about half of your thumb. That's all that it is. But the whole world, we know in the Scripture, is going to turn against Israel, especially Russia, China, and North Korea, and probably Iran, and Iraq, and a few of those. But uh, the Bible says of Russia that God will put a hook in her jaw. Tell somebody to say, God's going to do this, and he's going to pull them down against Israel. Amen. To finalize, and this, of course, I believe the church will be gone. I believe the rapture will take place, and they say, thank you, Jesus. If y'all want to stay here and fight, help yourself. But I'm out of here. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I, I mean, we're engaged to the Lord. I ain't never seen nobody who's engaged to the wife say, now I'm going to put you through my violent passion for him and that anger in my own personal hell for seven years, baby, Melissa. And if you love me after them seven years, we, we'll get hooked up. She done shaking her head no before I can get done with the comment. Amen. Ain't, ain't nobody in their right mind wants to marry somebody that beat the fire out of them. Come on, somebody. Amen. So now if you want to believe that you can go through all God's wrath and violent passion, you help yourself. But I ain't going. Hallelujah. I got, I got amens over here from the pastor and the, and, and the visiting preacher. And thank you, Jesus. The rest of y'all fool you on you. Amen. You can go through the tribulation. <laughs> amen. Uh, but there are many questions about the tribulation in Armageddon. The Bible speaks of the great day of the Lord as referred to by many of the prophets is a day of God's destruction and uh, is a day upon, of destruction upon sinful man that have chosen not to be born again and to serve the Lord. This is why the new birth is so important. It's a choice that you can take. If you don't want to do it, it's on you, but there's a day coming. You're going to say, Lord, I wish I'd have chose. Amen. Amen. So we must be born Again, of the water and spirit. This is not just our little little idea on the salvation. This is the word of God. Amen. This changes the sides. I mean, we immediately are put on top of all the principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, this world, spiritual weakness, high places, and the devil. That's all under the feet of the body of Christ, which is the church. Touch somebody and say, everything the devil's got is under our feet. Amen. It's under our feet. If we are born again of the water and spirit. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so I'm trying to help somebody. You must be born again of the water and spirit. And as Pastor said today, that starts with repentance. And did the bishop preach this morning? Woo, come on, somebody. I mean, repentance and about face. Amen. So uh, there's a great day of destruction coming. First Thessalonians 5 and 9. Let's put that and we'll read through a few verses of Scripture. As soon as I don't type out the verses, this is what happens. Boy, I tell you, I'm kidding. Amen. He's typing away up there. You got it? Huh? First Thessalonians 5 and 9. There it is. Hallelujah. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. His violent passion. It's orge in the Greek, O-R-G-A-Y. It means violent passion, abhorrence, punishment, indignation, and vengeance. Tell somebody, I'm not appointed to that. Amen. God has not appointed us under wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Tell somebody, say, I have obtained salvation by the Lord Jesus Christ. How did you do that? I was born again of the water and spirit. And that caused me to become a new creature. And the word creature here is literally creation. How new are you? Old things have passed away. And behold, 
all things are new. Everybody say everything's new. And so the safest place that we can be in these last days is in the church. John 16 and 33 tells us, these things have I spoken unto you that ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Here the word tribulation means affliction, anguish, burdens, or trouble. Anybody ever had trouble? Anybody ever had afflictions? Amen. Anybody been anguished? Come on, somebody be honest. Some of you saints ain't saying nothing. Y'all need to say amen. You ever had anguish? You ever had trouble? Ever had burdens? Amen. And sometimes we ah, what's the use, man? I just quit God. What do you mean you're going to quit God? I mean, you, you think a drunk or you think shooting up, snorting up some cocaine to make it better? <laughs> that ain't going to help nothing. I mean, you, maybe I give you a little high, a little buzz, but you're going to come back down and you're going to be further down than when you started. Amen. In this world, we're going to have trouble, afflictions, pain, burden, anguish, trouble. God's people have always been through trouble and burdens and afflictions. There's always been times in our life where we feel like we're pushed into the corners with simply no way out, our backs pushed up against the wall, time running short for deliverance, but God has always come through. Touch your neighbor and say, God's always come through. Amen. I may go through something. Can I tell you how you get through it? You got to keep stepping. Keep walking through it. Amen. You just got to keep walking. There's going to be hills and valleys, dips and turns, but you got to keep walking. And pastor said it today. Amen. You got to keep praying. You got to keep reading the word. Keep coming to church. Keep paying your tithes and offers. Keep being faithful. Keep witnessing, handing out fire. Just keep going. No matter what comes, you got to let hell know. Hell, whatever comes or goes, I'm going to keep on stepping. I'm not going to quit walking with the Lord. I'm preaching what I know. I've been there and I've told hell, hell, you can do all you want to, but I'm going to heaven. If it hair lips you and never ends you, you got it with you. I'm not going to hell. Somebody say, you got to keep walking. Amen. It don't matter what trouble comes, you got to keep walking. Amen. God has always come through for his people. His people have always come out of a burden. I feel like I lost something on the monitors. Keep me up on the monitor. Whoever's got that little pad, boy, I see you back there. It was good. I didn't say nothing about it till you messed with it. Everybody say amen. Amen. We've always come out of a burden. Now notice, in this world, the Bible says we are strangers, foreigners in this world, cosmos, in this present world system, now that we are born again, we have a, if you've never been to a foreign country, you don't understand what I mean by foreign. When I went to the Philippines two or three times, man, it was something else. I mean, it was like, whew, went back to 1902. I mean, we're way back economically, everything was, it was just rough. Amen. Pastor's been there many times, and, and it was just something else. Amen. Whenever we are born again, that's the feeling we should have in this cosmos, in this world system. We should always feel like in this world, what, you, you got to look at it and say, what is going on? What in the world? We got caught in one traffic going up there. Uh, at one day we ride in one of those little, they call them little scooter things, amen, that put five or six people back in the back of it. We got caught up in one, one of the little bridges they had. We got caught up there about three hours. They had traffic, rain came, flooded everything, and we're up there in the back, me and Landy and David Smith, and we're just up there caught in the back of that. What in the world? Three hours. You got to be kidding. We finally got back to the hotel and got there and got changed clothes and got cleaned up, and the phone rang. Somebody said, hey, brother God, you want to go with us? What do you mean go with us? Where are you going? Somebody called. They've got a place up with a basketball court, and they got enough people to put in the PA system up and wants to come preach. I said, well, sure, I'll go. We went up. There's 350, 400 people out in the middle of nowhere in this town with, I mean, call them houses. They wasn't houses. They just cardboard stacked up in bricks and boards up on it that was their beds and we walked up in there and got to preaching in a few minutes it, it wasn't 10 minutes they started coming in the front we started praying with them I prayed with one lady she had a hand all down like this it was very skinny you could tell it wasn't working it hadn't worked she couldn't move it 
Amen. We were praying with her to get the whole, boom, she started getting the Holy Ghost and just went down, started getting the Holy Ghost, heard a big commotion behind me, turned around, and that woman's left arm had come up and she was using it, and I mean, they were falling out. What are you saying, amen? When you're in the church, you're on top of everything. You do not want to get in the world now that you're in the church. Everybody say amen. So we're strangers and foreigners here, children of Israel. Amen. They struggled with it all the way through their Old Testament life. They have struggled with up and down, up and down. The Lord has said, okay, fine. You want the world? I'm gone. Leave them 70 years. Amen. We just let them go. They just, I mean, all kind of chaos and do the period of judges. They's up with a good judge and godly man and that one had passed away and a bad one come and they'd go down and they'd go back up and they'd go back down. And it covered 70 or 80 years. Amen, of time, amen, each one of them, and they would be up and down according to the leader. Israel had always went up and down, amen, but they came out of it. They kept stepping. They kept, when it came time to repent, they repented. When it came time to turn back to God, they turned back to God. Now, what we have to learn from that is we don't want to turn away from God. I said, we don't want to turn away from God. Daniel, look at the trouble he went through. Amen, amen. But he came out of it, amen. He just stood his ground, the three Hebrew boys. I mean, they, they were in the fiery furnace. I mean, they were facing it. And they said, I'm gonna give you one more chance. You bow down and worship me when I play this horn. I mean, the whole nation's bowed, but these three guys, the only three standing up. And they're like, what? Someone said, hey, you see them three guys out there? Well, go get them. I said, now, what's going on, fellas? Well, we, we're Hebrews, we, we're from the nation of Israel, and you know, we don't worship one God. Now look, I'm going I'm I'm to give you another chance. But if you don't go down this time when we play, I'm going to heat this furnace seven times hotter. Well, we, if, 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 if you want to do that, that's fine. God can deliver us. But if not, he'll deliver us out of your hand for sure. They played the music. They didn't bow. They heated it up. They got the, mo the soldiers that brought them to the mouth of the furnace. It consumed them. But when them three boys just stumbled up into that furnace, the bands came off, amen. They didn't even get a singed hair, no burn on their body. And they got up, look, he said, I think I see four in there. Tell them to come out. They come, what are you saying? I'm saying God will bring you out of whatever you get in. Whatever comes your way, tell somebody, God will bring me out of it. I'm not preaching trouble to anybody. I'm just saying in life things happen. There are good days and bad days, but God will bring you out of it. Come on, the good days far outweigh the bad days. Acts 14, 19 through 22, let's read that. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to the city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to that last word, Antioch. Thank you very much. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. That's somebody has to say, continue in the faith. Somebody's gonna need to remember this this week. You need to just continue in the faith. Continue in the faith. Continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. We will, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. So in 62 years, 70 years, 80 years, whatever you've been, you can look back and say, I've went through some tough times. I've had some pain. I've had some anguish. I've had some trouble, but I'm still here. Touch a neighbor and tell him I'm still here. Others may have quit, but I'm still here. Why? Because I'm not leaving this for anything or anybody. Amen. Touch somebody and say, I'm coming out. Amen. The word tribulation here is the same as the first. We must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you get a rising up spirit, a coming out spirit. I'm not quitting spirit. I'm not weak spirit. I, I'm an overcomer. Tell somebody, I got the Holy Ghost. That makes me an overcomer. Now, some of you aren't saying amen. You're going to make me go another 10 minutes. 
Come on, somebody. You got to get a hold of yourself. Hey, man, I'm going to go. I'm not prophesying trouble to anybody. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. There is going to be trouble, tribulation. There is going to be problems, but you have to keep stepping. You have to keep stepping. I hope you don't have no trouble all the way through to the first of the year. But if it comes, you just remember, "Uh uh-huh, I seen that coming. God headed that off. I'm going to keep stepping. I'm going to keep worshiping. I'm going to keep being faithful. I'm not quitting. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting for anybody or anything. First John 5 and 4, put that up please. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. That word is there, cosmos, the system. The system works against us. But if you're born of God, meaning you're born again, you will overcome. Touch somebody and say, I'm here tonight and I'm overcoming. I'm overcoming the stuff. I'm overcoming the bills. I'm overcoming the problems at work. I'm overcoming. I'm still stepping. I'm going out. Why? Because I've been born again. I am going to overcome this. Amen. Acts 15 and 26 says there were men that had hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means they had put themselves in trouble. They had come through problems. They had hazarded their lives for the name of Jesus. In the Bible days, they were literally persecuting. I mean, Paul ends up in prison for preaching the gospel. Amen. Now, hopefully it don't get like that. I believe we'll be gone before it gets that bad. I got two amens, but I'm still right. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say, we're getting out of here. But until then, tell somebody, until then, I'm going to keep on stepping. Now, I'm going to give you some scripture. There's no scripture that tells us to mourn, to weep, to cry in tribulations to the church. Listen to these verses, Romans 5 and 3. And not only so, we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. That tribulation is the same word. I, we glory in our troubles and our problems. Why? Because we know that tribulation is working patience in us. Patience, experience, experience, hope, and it just goes on. The verses are wonderful. Look at Romans 12 and 12. We've learned to rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Now, sometimes when trouble gets going, amen, you want to make a quick decision. Sometimes you, you may have to just stand both feet, just plant them. You can't go anywhere, but you definitely ain't going backwards. You just got to plant both your feet and dig in. Why? Because you're going to be patient in the trouble, the pain, the anguish, because God's going to work it out. Tell somebody, be patient in the midst of trouble and tribulation. Don't get crazy. As we say down here, don't get cray-cray. Amen. Don't don't lose your mind in church. Amen. Trouble's going to come all the time. I mean, it's just going to come, but you have to be patient in tribulation. Everybody say amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 7 and 4. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. Let's all read that together. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glory in you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. I've said this before. Anybody can praise him when everything's going good. That don't take no Holy Ghost, don't take nothing. Anybody can do that. But amen, when all trouble breaks loose, if you can still get to church... And if you can just get your hand up once or twice, I know that feels like you just shouted and ran the laps around the church. Sometimes it's tough. Amen. Amen. I know I've preached before, and I've been preaching, you know, around the country, and they want a bunch of people to get a hold of us. So I'm going through, I'm just like, man, look in. So I preach something, don't feel no God. Don't feel nothing nowhere, but I get to preach it. Why? Because God did. Don't say I'm going to feel God every time he preaches, but I'm just going to keep living for God, and I'm going to keep preaching the truth. 
get to preach it and it don't feel nothing. People come to the altar bawling and crying, makeup running, tears running, snot running out the nose. They just bohooing it. And I'm just standing there in shock. What's going on? I'm going to tell you what. In tribulation, I'm going to learn how to rejoice. I'm going to learn how to glorify God. Everybody say, in tribulation, in trouble, in pain. In situations that are not favorable, yeah, look at it. You're still on top of it. You're in the body of Christ. You've got a right and a reason to praise God anyhow. Romans 8 and 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. No, that, that tribulation does not have the power to separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Come on, tell somebody that my trouble can't separate me. Amen. John on the Isle of Patmos in the great tribulation, it was a great multitude that could not be numbered was the number of people. When the rapture takes place, it's going to be a great number of people that we cannot number. I was talking to Dr. Hughes the other day. We was talking about how many people had the Holy Ghost. You know, we say worldwide about 4 million, something like that. He told me, he said, Brother Calvin, you know how many people got the Holy Ghost over in China? I said, well, I heard about a billion, a billion underground. He said, no, no. I said, well, how, how do you know? He said, I've been there many times. I said, Brother Hughes, Dr. Hughes, you're kidding. You've been to China? I ain't never heard you go to China. He said, Brother Gone, I've been many times. I said, how many? He said, they say there is approximately 15 million people in China. He said, there are government officials that are baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. What are you saying? I'm saying the great multitude that will be caught up in the rapture cannot be numbered. Tell somebody it cannot be numbered. Amen. What I'm saying to you is you are in the best place you can be. You're in the body of Christ. You are born again of the water and spirit. And the Bible tells us we're on top of everything. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm on top of everything. All right, I got a few more verses, Acts 20 and 24. We'll read Acts 20 and 24. And this I beheld in lower great, lower great, Multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms and hands. Revelation 7 and 9. Read me Acts 20 and 24. Dun, 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 dun. But none of these things move me. Touch somebody say, none of these things move me. Tell somebody, nothing's going to move me out of the church. He said, neither can I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 23. We'll read down through verse 27. And they minister, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes more above measure, in prison more frequent, in deaths often. Now this is Paul writing. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. He said, not just the Roman, but the Jews have whipped me. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils and waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the, by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Paul said, but I'm still here. That was what the apostle Paul went through. Touch your neighbor and say, I can make it through it. And I want to tell you, none of this stuff is going to keep you from making it to heaven. Why? Because you are one of these that the Revelation 7 talks about are numbered that will come out of great tribulation. Not the great tribulation, but great tribulation. Burdens, afflictions, and trouble. Tell somebody I'm coming out of it. It may be this week, and I may be in it right now, and I may be wanting it. I'm trying to tell you, you're going to come out. It may be this week, something comes up. 
Just look for a way out. Just keep stepping. Just keep stepping. It might be the end of the year it comes, but when it does, just keep stepping. Amen. Everybody say, I'm going to keep stepping. Stand. I went 30 minutes today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quit my notes. I got some other stuff scribbled down here. I'm not going to mess with it. Now, I hope, I hope you've caught what I've said. 1 Peter 1, verses 5 through 9. Can you get me that? 1 Peter, there it is. Who are kept by the power of God through faith? Everybody say, through faith. I'm kept by the power of God. Unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Tell, them, tell somebody that's this time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, ye love. In whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Tell somebody, say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to keep on stepping. I'm going to keep on praising. Oh, somebody may laugh at you, make fun of you. It don't matter. You're going through. You're going to make it. Tell somebody, I'm going to make it. Amen, amen. Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him, I'm going to make it. Amen. As the music plays, I wonder if we could make our way down here to the altar. Make your mind up and prepare for the week. We're praying the protection of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord upon you. We know the Lord will make a way. Touch your neighbor and say, out of no way. Amen. All of us that need him will come to the altar. The rest of us, y'all are all good. I love you. Amen. High five somebody and say, I need him. Amen. You're going to make it. Turn to somebody next to you and say, you're going to make it. Tell somebody next to you, you're going to make it. Tell them, just keep stepping. Tell somebody, keep stepping. Keep stepping. Just keep stepping. Just keep stepping. Well, I got friends making fun of me. Just keep stepping. People at work are making fun of me. They notice a change. What are you doing? Just keep stepping. Amen. It's tough times. There are going to be trouble, anguish, burdens, afflictions. There's going to be that. But you just keep on walking with God. Keep on praising God. Keep on mag Paul said, through all of that, I'm going to keep on praising him. Amen. Would you lift your hands in the air as they begin to play and sing? In the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your power, your presence. We thank you for our new converts that are here. We thank you for those that have received the Holy Ghost in the last couple of weeks. We thank you for